<laughs> MMA fighting is, is, is the most stressful. You mean stressful mentally? Uh, in combination both. Yeah, yeah. all just everything involved. And there's so much involved. There's so much involved in an MMA fight. And, you know, and with that being said, I, I've, I've fought Muay Thai uh, in Thailand a couple of times. And that's by far the most dangerous thing that I've ever participated in. Uh, I, I wasn't stressed about it. Um, training is hard, but it's not as hard as wrestling. Um, but yeah, but an MMA fight is fucking stressful. Yeah. It's real stressful. Uh, and yeah, so it's, it's so, so in like when we compete in wrestling or jujitsu or whatever, right? You, you know, you may get hurt, right? There's always the possibility you're going to get hurt. But when you have an MMA fight, chances are you're really going to get hurt. Yeah. Like you're going to, and seriously, you could seriously get hurt. Is that what causes a big chunk of the stress? Or is it just like the winning aspect? Like what causes here's that? What, here's what causes the stress, right? For, I, and I'll, I'll go out on a limb and say this is for most fighters, okay? If you fight in a cage for money, chances are something went wrong in your childhood, right? Most of these, most, uh, as, as uh, Chris Lieben brilliantly put it, right? You could compare fighters to strippers, right? So okay. uh, there's, there's a, a very similar mentality going on there, okay? Um, women, if they don't have anything else to do, right? They get celebrated for their sexuality, mm -hmm. okay? You can get on a pole, right? right? And, and people will applaud you and you'll get attention, right? Men get celebrated for their ability to be violent, get in the cage right if you can fight even if you don't fight the cage and everybody at the right. bar knows you're the toughest guy there you're gonna get a couple free drinks social status right and yeah a lot yeah. of it's it's, social it's currency this, too, yeah it's right? a social currency so exactly. i'll use myself for an example right and i know this is this is a fairly universal thing fighting if you listen to what i said at the beginning of the podcast was the only identity i had it was mm -hmm. the only source of love that i had mm -hmm. okay it was the only source of me feeling good about myself that i had in my life now not everybody is like this right, not, right. but but I think a large degree that this, this plays a factor. Um, so now, am I going to have reason to love myself or fucking despise myself after this fight? Well, it's going to be dependent okay. if my hand gets raised or not. Mm -hmm. Okay, That is a tremendous amount of stress to carry with you into anything. Right? If you're going to like yourself or not, Mm -hmm. or, or despise yourself and hate yourself and have no value for yourself mm -hmm. based on a win and a loss. Mm -hmm. That's heavy. Right. Yeah. Right? That's fucking stressful. Yeah. What's, what could be more stressful, right? Then I'm not going to be comfortable in my own skin for months if I lose. Yeah. Right. Right. That's fucking tough, man. It's, that's, that's a point it, I've never, it feels heard. like someone died mm -hmm. close to you and you would have rather someone died. <laughs> and you know that that's how you're going to feel if you yeah, lose. Right, if you lose. Yeah, which that's is where it comes from. Yeah. Now, now, do you think, so it's almost like you're saying you're either here, right? So you win your way up here, you are you're, you lose your way down here. Like where you are. The difference is, is when you win, right? you're here for a few seconds, uh -huh. right? And then you got to do it again. If you lose, you're here for a lot longer time. So, so what, so what helps you and maybe other fighters or how can you help other fighters, right? With this, like get back. When you when you do lose, because everyone's going to lose, right? Most people right. have a loss somewhere on their record. So, what gets you to get at least climbing back up? Okay. Right? So, what I because this affected me so deeply mm -hmm. as as a fighter and an athlete, what I really encourage the athletes that I work with and uh, is let's get a hold on why this dynamic is existing in the first place mm -hmm. before we even get in there. Okay. okay, so let's do the work to where our identity is not wrapped up in the winning and losing, but in the effort, because ultimately the only thing that you control is the effort, right? Absolutely. So if, if I can get an athlete to buy into that, and, and this takes work, man, this is not easy, and this yeah. is why I'm not the coach for everybody. If you don't want to do this work, please don't ask me to coach you, because mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't work with people that don't want to mm -hmm. work on, on this part of the game. Um, you're going to have to look at some dark stuff if you want to, if you have this within you already, right? You already have this sort of dichotomous thinking about mm -hmm. winning and losing, uh, and you're carrying that with you. There's a reason, right? And, and often has to do with a lot of trauma and, 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 and dark, ugly stuff that, that's much easily pushed, pushed under the rug, right? So let's start talking about that. Mm -hmm. Let's start talking about all the things that you're afraid of, right? And, if you regularly start leaning into things that you're afraid of, you start to build confidence because you realize it's my experience and, and a lot of people that, that have been in similar work. A lot of what's underneath there is a boogeyman. It's nothing. Mm -hmm. 
right? It's, yeah. it's, it's, we have ideas about it. Uh, I have, I have fears about it, but when I really look, there's mm-hmm. not a lot there. <laughs> yeah. Right? yeah. There's these old stories mm-hmm. that a five-year-old told himself to make sense of the world. Mm-hmm. Right. And now I'm 40 and mm-hmm. I can make a little bit more sense of that. And, and sometimes it's not so cut and dry. Some people need to get like, you know, uh, therapy and, and, mm-hmm. and, and real help through, through some of this stuff, particularly if you've, if you've been a victim of like a, abuse and things like that, but you have to look at it because if you don't look at it, here's what happens. You can still become a world champion and be miserable. And that's the worst fucking thing of all, right? And I've seen that happen. I've seen that happen lots of times, right? Guys become world champions, Hall of Fame, the greatest of all time, and not happy, mm-hmm. right? So because there's this idea that once I get here, this is going to validate right. me. That's going to make you happy up there. Not just it's going to make me happy, but now the world, I have some evidence to show the world that they should love me, mm-hmm. right? And th- But then it doesn't work like that, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. It doesn't work like that. This only makes you feel good for, for so long. And mm-hmm. then you need more, and then you need more, and then you need more. Right. And it actually doesn't work at all. Right. And then what do you do? Yeah. So right. if you haven't resolved it in here. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. Yeah. If you, don't, if you don't resolve that stuff, if you're on a road where you're not looking at that stuff, mm-hmm. I mean, fuck, what are you going to do when fighting's over? <laughs> yeah. who, who are you now? And what do you have to lean on? Where's your identity? Right? Where's, mm-hmm. where's the, the claps coming from now? If you can't clap for yourself and you need mm-hmm. other people to clap for you to get by, you're going to have a real hard time when fighting's over. Mm-hmm. Is, is that what we see, especially recently, like a lot of guys coming out of retirement to fight again? I believe so. You know, I believe like they, they wanted that accolade. Yeah, or I, I believe mismanaged money. I believe, yeah, there's, there's, you know, getting back out there, having people talk about you again, mm-hmm. you know, being relevant, I right. think all that stuff. Like if you've ever been in that world, it's, it's really hard to it's let all, go. It's all mental. Like you said, it's like my grandfather used to say, it's all here in your ass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, um, now you brought up the, the, the money factor. I mean, there's a lot of guys that just, and I don't know if you can, you can speak to this too. It's like, I think people, and I've heard it in, in, in on my mats here, some students like, yeah, I just want to be a world champion. Everything will be set. And I'm like, no. you realize there's a lot of broke world champions out there. I think people think that just the title world champion is going to lead them to money and being mm-hmm. able to afford things too. That's a, That may lead to a lot of depression in, in these world champions. It's no path. There's a lot of value to being intentional about the things that you do in life, mm-hmm. right? So if on your path to being a world champion, you're setting things up for yourself to be able to make money. Look, look talk to Gordon Ryan, right? He will openly, he, he's the yep. best model for this. He makes almost no money competing. If he had to live off the money he made from competing, mm-hmm. I mean, maybe, he's open about that. maybe he'll yeah. be okay, yeah. but he's a millionaire from fucking instructionals and setting yes. himself up, marketing his, himself his, in a his, way. His personality, yes. right? His, yeah, his, he's a millionaire yeah. from that. So I don't think everybody needs to be Gordon Ryan per se or carry his persona Right, but he was very intentional about the way that he set him up. Well, and, and, so and that's a good point because we see this a lot. We see guys who have an okay, whatever jujitsu career, or they're okay jujitsu, but they're actually really good at branding themselves and marketing right. themselves and making money. And that's sort of how you know what we're saying is as an athlete, how part of how you need to approach it. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, and or you could be making investments, or you could yeah. be you could mm-hmm. be doing anything. But you have to have an intention there. If the intention is I'm going to be a world champion and, and by proxy, I'm going to be set for life financially, that's not how it works, yes, no. right? And so a lot of times it's having good people around you. Like if you don't go on that path with the intention of setting yourself up, like Uriah Faber bought an entire street of houses so he could house fighters, right, that are ultimately he funnels into his gym, right, and then takes percentages off the top of their fight, like, that's how you set yourself up, right? right? Mm-hmm. That's being intentional, right? Mm-hmm. That's smart. Not everybody has the head for that or has the right people around them mm-hmm. telling them like, hey man, like, I know you just won this fight, but maybe we don't need to be going on crazy vacations, spending money on, on bottles in Vegas or, or, you know, just being crazy with your money. Like this stuff will run out. Do you think it's not, is it, they're not necessarily looking at their future, you know, like going like, okay, Very 10 true. years from now, right? And is it also partially because maybe some of them, if they didn't grow up with anything, you know, now or something, they have 100%, a little. hundred percent, man. Mm-hmm. Listen, this is, this is the craziest thing in fighting, right? If you got a guy on his way up, okay, mm-hmm. sometimes they get like 300 bucks for a fight. I've seen guys make less, right? Mm-hmm. 100 bucks to show up and fight. 
I've seen guys give that hundred dollars to the coaches, like, hey, thanks, you know, right. Uh, right? Coaches, you don't make a lot of money off off most fighters, right? You make they very little off most fighters. That same guy that gave you the only hundred he got is gonna bitch and moan when he's got to give you ten percent of a hundred grand, <laughs> right. right? So. Yes, that scarcity absolutely mm-hmm. plays into it, and not not every fighter's like that. But I've I've seen that so much, and it's still so shocking to me every time mm-hmm. uh, that you that there's a disconnect. That hey man, you don't think I was worth ten percent of getting you to this hundred hundred thousand dollar fight? Right, right, yeah. Um, and, and I've I've had athletes gladly pay me. I've had athletes pay me more, right? Mm-hmm. But I've seen that a lot. A lot to the point where it's like, wow, man, that scarcity mindset stays with you. Mm-hmm. You know, it stays with you if you don't do anything to, to you know, to sort it out, right? So address it. Yeah. Fighting will give you a vehicle to get out of some bad situations, mm-hmm. right? Uh, absolutely. But if it's the only vehicle you have, eventually that motherfucker is going to break down. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. You need to have another car. You yeah. Know? You, yeah. You have to have it if that's the only one because. It doesn't solve the problems, mm-hmm. right? It masks them. It gives you a sense of, of worth. It, give, it gives it gives some of us a sense of validation, right? But then, what happens when that's over, mm-hmm. right? Did you replace that with anything, right? Did you come to an understanding of why you needed it in the first place, right? Uh, oftentimes, sadly, the answer is no. Mm-hmm.